we started watching those like videos where they do 3d models of like how deep the ocean is and how big statues are. And we started watching one about like how big planets and stars are. And Jose decided to explain everything he knows about space to me in like a six minute span. And by the end of it, I was like, (laughs) (laughs) yo, yo, what up? It's episode 134. Of the Let's joystick shows. Wow. So really... These numbers hold no value to me <laughs> yeah. anymore. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's only like when we get to like the zeros that it's like, oh crap, oh. you know? It's like, a, oh my God. Or the actual date where it's like the actual Yeah, two like an year anniversary or, year. or something. Yeah. Before we get into anything, welcome to the Joystick Show. Where it's a little podcast hosted by us. Yeah. Us is Team Joystick. You know, that's the boys. We Three talk to your today. face about a lot of stuff for like 40, 50 minutes. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you should definitely like this episode of The Joystick Show and subscribe to us because it helps us. It's like, it's like yeah. a, there's like an internet ecosystem thing here that's going on mm-hmm. where like, you know, the sun is the subscribe button. And without it, we will die. die. So. so what's the moon? I don't know about this. No, you're thinking <laughs> I, like astronomically here. Yeah, I'm thinking no. like I was thinking like uh, plants photosynthesis. Yeah, photosynthesis exactly. Okay, yeah, mitosis. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mitochondria is powerhouse okay. of the cell. Sorry, exactly. Yep. You, you took the words right out of my <laughs> mouth. So make sure to go ahead and support the boys Very for important. more dumb shit like that. Yeah. Uh, fucking lots of lots of stuff to talk about. Yeah. But before we get into anything. I wanted to bring up one thing because I know I'm going to forget one it one thing if I do not talk about okay. it. Okay. Okay. And it's in direct relation to Dylan. So one thing we will we'll, we'll, it's okay. gonna be a bulk thing we're gonna talk about in a, like a, literally two minutes. But we went to go see a movie. Uh yes. it was great. Like I said, we'll talk about that in a bit. After the movie was over, drove, dropped off Jerry, dropped off Joey, but you and I hung out. Yes. For like an hour, two hours in my we house. Did. I left my hoodie at your house. Yeah, you did. Yeah. yeah. You left your hoodie at my house like three weeks ago. Yeah. It was when I gave you the green shirt for St. Patty's. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That was like two weeks ago. But yeah. regardless, uh, right before Dylan left, Dylan asked me if I had seen a particular movie. <laughs> Oh, a movie a movie that aired on the sci-fi network oh yes so uh can, can i can i give a little bit of backstory you can give as much backstory as you want i just want to talk about one specific moment that left uh, us in legitimate tears okay but yes so uh during uh there's a week during the year that everyone loves and it's called shark week mm-hmm. discovery channel there's okay. like a big thing there's like a bunch of shark documentary shark shows sci-fi week they show a bunch of horrible sci-fi shark movies for a week Sharknado is very yeah. popular. Sharktopus is very uh, shark coyote. You're telling me like about that. your favorite ghost shark. Yeah, right? ghost shark is really good. It's a shark that could come on land yeah. and go through walls. Yeah, I, I, I saw know. Santa Jaws. Santa See, Jaws that's, good. That's, okay. There's, so. there's a lot of different. By the way, when do we jump on this trend? When do we make, make the joystick shark, shark movie? movie? The shark bark. I like it. Uh, it's a dog shark. That probably exist. We dress Canella shark. in a fucking shark <laughs> outfit. <laughs> and we pretend like it's a legitimate shark terrified out of our minds. <laughs> I like it. Okay. But uh, there is one movie in particular that I showed Bobby yesterday that uh, actually captivated me and my girlfriend. We watched it again last week. And may I admit, Dylan made a very good point. Like, he's going to say the title and you're going to be like, what the fuck? It's watchable, all right? Yeah. Interesting. Like, even Dylan mentioned it, and I, like, in my head, I was like, it is, and I'm mad. Like, yeah. I'm watching it, <laughs> but go ahead. It is uh, a movie starring our favorite cast of Goon and Goblins. It is Jersey Shore Shark Attack. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> which you might be saying, Joey, does that star the actual true cast of Jersey Shore? No. Just okay. knockoff actor versions of them. Okay. Yeah. Which but is it's supposed hit. to be them? It's like them. Yeah. But like different, like, uh, okay. The, the a different, it's not exactly in, that. Instead, but of, it's the, supposed instead to be, of the situation, it's the The predicament. No, I it's the complication. The complication. Yeah. There's it's, like Pauly C. He has instead of Snooky, it's Nookie. Yeah. Dumb shit like that. Okay, that's know. dumb. Okay. Uh, and, you know, there's a lot to talk about this movie. One thing I definitely want to just mention real quick is the the famous Joey Fatone scene. Yes. A lot of, like, celebrity cameos, especially, like, Italian people in this movie. But Joey Fatone makes a cameo where he's supposed to be 
be playing some like fundraiser show for the town or yeah, something Fourth like of that. July, yeah, July. Yeah, and he's like he's standing at the 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 stage and he goes to sing the song at the mic. The the, the, be, the beginning of Bye Bye Bye. Yeah, place, yeah. I believe. yeah. It's like <laughs> dun, dun. It, it's not the beginning of Bye Bye Bye, but it's made to sound like a traditional '90s yeah. boy band song. Like that's okay. what he's there to do. But before he even gets a chance to sing a lyric, the shark jumps out of the water and eats Joey Fatone before bringing him back into the water. Uh, you know, it's ridiculous. But the best part is obviously I catch it because I edit shit. I literally watched it and I was like, Dylan, that was a picture of Joey <laughs> Fatone. <laughs> you go frame by frame. It is a picture of Joey Fatone. Like he's literally like, and he's like, he just moves to the side <laughs> and then disappears the when the shark, shark is, yeah, is fully on screen. But it, but the part that killed us, like, uh, really fucking destroyed me and why I brought it up. Because this part, oh, my God, I was in Because I wasn't li- I just watch this movie normally at home. But. But the, so we're watching it, but Dylan is like, you know, skip through it. Because the whole movie is on YouTube. But he's Hour like, and a half he's movie, like yeah. skip through it by every five, ten seconds, you know, to the best parts. He, was, he even told me, he's like, you'll find stuff. And I was like, cool. So as I'm skipping through, <laughs> Dylan is giving me the backstory of this film, right? He's like, yeah, they're the Jersey Shore guys, da 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 And then he go, he literally, Dylan says these words. He goes, so the premise, right, is like, it's the 4th of July weekend. Cop character. So it's the 4th of July weekend. <laughs> literally like that, bro. In the same oh, case. The timing God. could not have been more perfect. That's perfect. It was like a second between when Dylan, and word for word, we were literally <laughs> looked at each other and cried. Like, we were crying. <laughs> Oh man! Those but moments. now I have to watch Jersey Shore yeah. Shark Attack in full. We could literally, I could literally do like a two minute best of yeah, yeah, upstairs. No. But now that Ooh. movie sucked. What movie did we go see? Yeah, we went to go see a. I mean, if that's on the zero of that spectrum, we went to go see a ten or the other the opposite. Nine point nine, yeah. eight, seven, five. Man, we went to go see John Wick Chapter Four. Whew. Let's man. just get this right off the bat. This is gonna be a spoiler bit of a, of a th- you know what actually before i throw up the spoiler graphic let's just talk about what we liked about like not what we liked about but general thoughts and feelings before we actually spoil this shit because i want mm. people to actually get the the deal before we fucking already say shit that you know okay so uh, I'll, I'll real quick go ahead Let, actually let's hear this from first i want to hear this from dylan dylan okay why what it what was your opinion on the movie amazing movie right off the bat uh, my favorite thing about the movie is that they've really like nailed their style of how to make a John Wick movie. I feel, whereas like all of them are really good at that style, but this movie had so many scenes where it was like they just wanted to make the scene look cool as fuck. Yeah, and there's uh also scenes where it's like very. I don't want to say tongue in cheek, but very self aware mm-hmm. as well. Like there's scenes in, throughout the movie where it's just like uh, one scene in particular is the staircase scene. Yeah, where it's just like you know exactly what the fuck is going to happen in that scene, and you're waiting for it, and mm-hmm. it happened. You're like, oh god damn it! But there's just many like action sequences that are really cool, but other ones that are kind of like funny. Like oh damn, I didn't expect that. Mm-hmm. What about you, Joey? Um, it definitely felt fresh. I liked the first one a lot and the second one and third one kind of was like, all right, I got the gist of it, but this new one felt definitely, there was new kills, new fighting styles, new, like there was bow and, bow and arrows. Like I'm like, oh, that's fresh. They wasn't in any of the any other movies. Um, so it was just cool to see like different ways of John Wick taking down people instead of just, you know, the average way you, we've seen since one through three. And yeah, I felt like the stakes were higher. The stakes were definitely higher. The world was built from one to three. Like everything was explained. We know everything as much as John knows. And it was just, what's how is this going to conclude? Mm-hmm. So that's what was cool to me. Like I knew this was going to be the conclusion. It's interesting to get Joey's take on it because Joey literally saw the first movie like a week ago. So you kind of crammed them all in that week. Literally saw one, two, three, and then went to see the, Which, the newest considering one. how the, the whole movie happens in like a week span, it's kind of yeah. cool that you did do that. So if I can give a, a concise thing before we get into more of the details <clears throat> of the film, as somebody who very much loves the John Wick films, and it's probably one of my favorite film series of all time, Yes, uh, that might have been just as perfect of a John Wick film that you could have made, and I do think it was the best action film I've ever seen in my life. Oh, To damn. the point where I think it's almost a criticism at the same time. It really felt like John Wick 4 was pure action, nonstop, beginning to end. Whereas I part, like I wear, I wish there were a few more beats in the film where we could have gotten some more stuff. But at the same time, the action is so intense, so well done that yeah. it doesn't feel, 
campy. It doesn't feel cash grabby. It really feels like it's driving the narrative. Mm-hmm. So that's why I can't really say that it's like stupid or it's not, or it's uh, what's the word? It's not necessary. Mm-hmm. But I kind of wish there was some more like, Let's dare I say, character talk. development stuff. Because one of my biggest things to say about this movie is how many cool ass fucking characters they introduced. But uh, I, I would definitely give that movie a solid nine point five out of ten. It's very. Good I think movie. it deserves to be up there. John Wick is pretty good. And uh, now, spoiler alert: you have been warned. Yes. So I'll wait like a good five seconds for you to go ahead, go to the description, click on the chapter right under John Wick review where we talk about that other thing. And uh, yeah, there you go. John's dead. Holy shit! Crazy. <laughs> So I know that was new for you guys, but I had read a fucking screenplay leak not too long ago, about four or five weeks ago. Same and I didn't want to believe it, but it felt right. It felt yeah. true. And I was like, I have to watch it for myself. And I got to say, it was something I, I thought about for way too much, considering it's a fucking fictional film about people who are about, not real. About people not really but, you know, I'm the movie guy, and I'm always thinking about shit like that. But for a whole week, no, no joke, I was just thinking about, did it feel right to kill john and the reason i was thinking about that was not because of like how cool he is as a character it wasn't because of like how much potential there is for the future it's really just like ingrained into his character like a he's pretty unkillable like that's how it's it's, yeah. it's displayed it's it's he's impossible to yeah. kill throughout and the whole film b the whole point is that he's trying to kill his way out of like the life so it's like it would feel really fucking stupid if this whole movie is about John fighting and killing to get out of the life and then he just dies anyway. So going into the movie, I was actually kind of like upset and a little nervous because I was like, this is probably not going to end well. Yeah. But to put a little more context, I, I won't go into specific detail into how John dies, but John dies at the end of a high table duel at the very end of the film. But the best way I could describe it is he dies on his own terms. It's like John goes out his way, and for what mm. it's worth, John is out of the life by the time he dies. And in a weird way, after I saw that, I was like, "They closed it. Great end." I thought I was it was like, a really good end too. It pretty felt fire. Real, like <laughs> you're gonna get pissed at that. It felt realistic to me. Like mm. there's no way he can get out of this situation. It would be too far fetched for this man. Even if he's a great man, and I get it, it's a movie. You can drop expectations, but I'm like. In, yeah. Wait, what situation do you mean in particular? Like getting like, shot in the stomach? No, like going through all, oh, these, all people of these people to get to the top gotcha, and, yeah. and then leave and be left alone forever. Like yeah. there was no happy ending. I mean, don't him. get me wrong. There's a there's another Bobby that really would have loved to watch another six John Wick films where he just goes country <laughs> oh, to country. Oh, it's, you know? it's, uh, it's like, where are we now? Malaysia? Yeah, Let's exactly. Go. Pretty much, yeah. Exactly. That'd be cool. And for what, like talking in terms of setting and scenery, how fucking cool it was to see him globetrot from like fucking yeah, Japan awesome. to Germany to fucking France. Like that was sick. I love that a whole bunch. I wanted to say about the ending. Um, When it ended, I was like, damn. And I saw everyone around us. We all, we went opening night so opening night movies are usually like fans wearing t-shirts and like like really hyped people for this when the movie was done like i was like oh that was a good movie and as i saw people getting up them in their chairs the look of confusion on their face was like was it good like what was no it? yeah are we, are we happy that no no that, are we happy? It, it's funny joey brings like, that up that's actually like this weird effect that's happening now where people don't really necessarily know how to fully review john wick because the general like audience is very conflicted and they're still processing it yeah. they're still like it's weird like it's almost like a family member dying but they're yeah. like i don't know what to think they're of like, this i show. don't know how to feel it's gonna like, like hit, gone. it's gonna be like it's gonna hit you three weeks later when you're like when is John <laughs> when, when it, no like legit you're like when is John Wick five gonna <laughs> yeah or, you know, like, you're like yeah. and they leave hope you know there is a post credit scene that depicts uh, two of the newer characters in the film you know they don't really show much but it basically implies that one of them might be dying soon but it definitely it's like uh there's more stories to tell in the John Wick universe yeah they, they opened that. up a new a lot of characters and that that's the cool. last thing I wanted to touch on I wanted to ask you guys who your like favorite new John Wick characters were because they introduced like five new characters I thought yeah. that was sick I thought uh nobody was cool but I feel like they can like maybe like you said if they maybe brought out his character more I just knew him as a guy that was like I'm gonna like make sure you don't die because I want your bounty up higher I found out his name is tracker 
tracker yeah okay okay and, cool and uh the oh, thing is that really because i thought i thought he was a tracker i didn't know that. no that's what i thought too oh. but if well if you go onto the cast list it's his name as tracker oh okay. that's what it's called um i liked him a lot i don't get me wrong i think the dog thing is a little overplayed just because yeah. we it's like first of all that's like the whole john point then we got the holly berry scene in three which is sick even though I, I still think that the dog shit in four is fire too. What I liked about Tracker was his weapons. I really liked the whole like Wild West vibe of the, the lever action rifle, his revolvers. Like that was so dope. Also the fact that he like draws everything he sees and stuff. Super cool. Uh, did you have a favorite? Uh, no, I mean, I just liked how it kind of felt like just like a gauntlet of villains. Yeah, that was And that's cool. how it should always be in action movies. It shouldn't just be like one guy. It should be like, hey, you have to do this. And you, it well, should be trials should and be tribulations. A bunch of people trying what was, to get what to was cool about that, too, is like I, I started to look at parallels between John Wick and, weirdly enough, James Bond. I was yeah. like, they both have really fire villains, right? Like yeah. to the point where like I know the whole point is that John is the killer. He's the Baba Yaga. But part of me was like hoping, like, man, I really wish some of these fucking villains stick around because, like, they're so, f- yeah. like, first of all, the, the the Russian dude from the first one, uh, what's his name? I think Victor, or not, I don't know, fucking hilarious, great villain, arguably one of my favorite. I think he's a like a favorite for me too. Second movie's villain, fucking Santini, I think his name Santino. He's fucking menacing as shit too, but he's also like a prick. Like you hate him. You're like this little fucking like entitled asshole. Third movie's villain Zero, super cool, super badass trying to kill John just because he wants to fucking look cool while he's doing it. And then we got fucking Marquis, man. Literally one of the, like, you want to fucking shoot this guy he's right like, off the He's get. like, he is like sl- clean but slimy. Yeah. He's like the slimiest human being. And this guy, what's his name? Is it Bill Skarsgård? I know that yeah. there's a whole Skarsgård family. Yeah. He has such a fucking knack for playing these menacing ass characters. <laughs> I don't fully understand it, but it works. And like, I'm not even trying to like directly. I don't. Draw. It's not even. I want to say like a pomp- pretty boy. Face, it's like so. pompous, but uh, that's not even. Like, the I'm right not word. trying to draw parallels to Pennywise because they're two very different characters, but they're both menacing as shit in two completely different ways. Like, one is a killer alien clown, and then the other one is just like a fucking rich asshole who mm. can do whatever he wants with no consequence. Could be like the thinness of his face or something. But uh, the other thing I was just going to mention is, despite those characters, none of them were my favorites. My favorite was fucking Donnie Yen. Shout outs to Kane. I'd be content if we just get Kane movies yeah. from now on. I was, I would, he was dope. I, I Not going to lie, at the beginning, I thought he was really dumb. I'm not mm-hmm. going to lie. I saw the whole gimmick and I was like, oh, God. But then once it actually was like shown in the movie, I was like, it turned me 180. I was well, like, this is really two things cool. I wanted to point out about Kane's character, right? Just yeah. to give preface for people who may not have watched it or just following along. He's a blind assassin. Yes. He uses a cane and a gun, and that's kind of his whole shtick. There's all their cool things he uses. He uses like, sounds. He's like and doorbells senses. and shit he like that. He purposefully misses. He's just like, bang, bang, To hear bang, the bang, room bang. and shit. But what, the first thing I really liked about his character is compared to scenes with other like blind superhero like characters like daredevil scenes and stuff him. it felt oddly realistic like obviously there's there's it's no not, such there's no nothing real about a, a, a blind, blind assassin, assassin at that level but it made it feel like okay like yeah, it this, could guy's, happen, this guy's and, fucking good yeah you know, yeah, you know it, like, good. it, it didn't feel like oh he has superpowers it felt like it's oh like this guy's tools. been through some shit and he knows a thing or two like this guy's been shot this yeah guy's been stabbed probably you and know, then like, the second thing that i really loved about kane's character and i don't know if you guys noticed it is his whole spiel or like if his weapon of choice is his cane, which is secretly a sword and he pulls it out and then mm-hmm. he can start like, you know, slicing people with it. I thought it was interesting how efficient and tactical he is with the sword in the exact same way John is with his guns. John isn't a flashy killer. It's boom, boom onto the next guy. When Kane pulls out his sword, it's onto the next guy. They're not even, he's not slicing people in half. He's not he's slashing not them across the top. In fact, right, the, yeah, the right. Guy. Most of the times Kane kills people with his sword in the movie. You don't even notice it because they're just moves. so quiet and he's onto the next one. And then they fall over, but it's beautiful. Cause it's like, as a filmmaker, at least I really like seeing shit like that. That's a little more real or a little more like less flashy. Cause it's still, it's just as like, Almost mystifying. It's like, oh fuck. That's you need a sick. mix. You need a mix of like the. Ooh, yeah. Oh, oh, recall, like the you, it's funny you brought up about the John Wick not being like as like performing as show offy. That whole nunchuck where he's not even using nunchucks correctly. He yeah, picks but it it, up, and he's just like. Duh. 
after yeah. and just using it like a whole melee but weapon. But if you think about it too, like, you know, we when you think about the nunchuck thing, we always think about Bruce Lee, right? With the fucking flipping uh, But you'd be you. wasting mad energy. It's like he used it efficiently in a real fight. Like he got the knockouts. He choked that. people out with it. That's what I love about John's character. He's not in there for the crazy. Even his martial arts skill is, is based in judo and BJJ. Yeah, brings him to rolling. the ground. Yeah, I'm just going to bring you down to the ground. He's not doing flying kicks or anything like that. It's a really like grounded no. character. And also, if you're in a action. suit, how are you going to throw a kick like that? You know? Where you, 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 I mean, it's a bulletproof so, so. <laughs> It's a little nut. But regardless, <laughs> solid 9.5 out of 10. I'm probably going to watch it again on Tuesday. It might get a higher score. We'll see. But uh, yeah, I loved it a lot. I mm. thought it was really cool. I want to like go see it with my dad or some shit. You know? I want to go see it with my dad too. Since that's my dad's I'm going it. to see it with my dad. Like, let's all go watch with let's our dads. Go, bro, go that's so hype, bro. And then, <laughs> <laughs> our, our moms could go to Eddie's sweet shop. Yeah. <laughs> call it a day. <laughs> I got something else kind of cool to talk about. Yeah. Ooh. So, like I mentioned, uh, Jose and I were hanging out, but that was yesterday. I'm talking a little further back. Right. So, Jose came over like a week ago. Lame. Yeah, right. And uh, we were, you know, all Jose and I really do is we order food. He watches me play a game for like an hour, and then we just watch YouTube videos. It's kind of the gist. We're content. Yeah. We're, we're easy to entertain boys, right? Relax. So, so as we're hanging out, Jose asks me, he's like, yo, you want to watch something cool? And I'm like, yeah. And he tells me to look up on YouTube this guy's name. The guy's name, so I don't get it wrong, is <coughs> Where's 981? Okay? So that's an, that's, a, that's an area code, I believe. Sure. No? I don't know. Okay. Uh, so the guy's name is Where's Nine Eight One, and his shtick on YouTube is he has dash cam videos from his car okay. when he like he's basically like a drag racer. Oh, I've seen. Yeah, yeah, yeah I've seen. Uh, so Jose was like, yeah, he's got all these compilations, and he's like, check, he has a compilation where he uh, it's like a thirty minute video, and it's all the times he runs from the cops. And Jose's explaining it to me. He's like, yeah, they know this guy, and they know him by car. So as soon as they see him, they're like, I think that's him. They run the plates, and then they flash the lights, and he dips every single time. It's like a game this guy plays. Mm -hmm. We start watching the compilation. First video plays. We're both looking at it, and I'm like, that's oddly fucking familiar. No. Keep watching, and we're like, that's the Bell Parkway. Or like he's coming back from like Coney Island, he's driving past Erskine. Yeah, I'm like, he's oh, that's, driving on the boat. That's, that's fucking crazy, right? Into Bob's house. Yeah, right. <laughs> like mid fucking video. Yeah, I love I love seeing shit like that. Second clip. That's the Coca Cola sign in L I C. Yeah. Fucking now he's driving up, you know, in fucking uh, in a like by Astoria, yeah. you know. We're All like, right, huh, yeah. it's a little strange. Third video. Now he's in Bayside, yeah. fucking you know, <laughs> by Northern Boulevard. Closer. Yeah. Now he's on the Jackie Robinson Parkway, yeah. getting off Whoa. at Forest Park Drive. Yeah. You know, oh, shit. he's getting closer. So you know, immediately I look at Jose and I'm like, "What have you been up to, Jose?" I'm like, "You know, you've been doing some fucking some driving in your fucking spare time." But long story short, this is a guy who like lives in the Queens neighborhood. Like every yeah. single one of his videos, you recognize where it is. It's like QCM or something, and you're what? like, "Holy shit!" Cool. He has a video on YouTube where he breaks. Hit, like I don't know if there is a lap record, but he record a fucking lap on the Jackie Robinson Turnpike in two minutes and eleven. That's seconds. amazing, that's crazy. yo. No, because that's a lot of people do that because it's like it's like since it's like zigzaggy, yeah. it's super zigzaggy <clears throat> and like terrifying. Yeah. Like you know, I barely go fucking forty on Be the Jackie. People Robinson. are going twenty five. There's no traffic. Yeah, word. <laughs> so this guy's fucking zooming. He gets on at like the Van Wick and ends up all the way at Bushwick in like two minutes. I'm yeah. like, holy fucking hell. But it's it's like I, you know I'm not I'm not uh what's the word endorsing I'm not endorsing the illegal activity that's being conducted by Mr. Where's Nine Eight One. However, if you're a New Yorker who's into some high thrill exhil exhilarating yeah. content, I would definitely give uh, one of his videos a watch. It's pretty. I mean, honestly speaking, it was more fun for Jose and I to just like. We just turned into like little Batmans by the end of it. We're just like looking at signs. Like, where the mm -hmm. fuck is that? Google that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is where I thought it was. <laughs> yeah, literally. We're literally, like playing fucking GeoGuessr. Literally fucking, fucking GeoGuessr. That meme of Leonardo DiCaprio with the drink. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's exactly <laughs> us. That actually provides a, a good segue for uh, something I want to talk mm -hmm. about. Yeah. Like, a, like the scooter. I was on a segue. Yeah. Oh, nice. Sorry. But no, I wanted to talk about my man Rainbolt, uh, the Rain GeoGuessr. Man? Oh man, what country is he living in now? Uh, he's in Malaysia, I believe. Malaysia. Now. But before that, him and like a few of the other GeoGuessr guys just basically were like, "Hey, we want to like see the world, right?" So they were in countries that don't have Street View, and they bought, a, they have a 360 camera 
So they're doing street view in places that don't have street wow. view, which other people have done before. It's like a very common thing for like countries that don't have the official Google coverage. Can they sell that to Google? Yes, but it's never like good enough. Gotcha, or Google, gotcha. Google will much rather just do yeah. their own thing. Uh, and I think with uh, they were in the country of Laos, which is Laos, but people don't pronounce the S. And they were walking around with this 360 camera. Obviously, everyone's like looking. It's a very poor country. Everyone's like looking around, and they're in the capital of Vietnam. And they're walking around like this really old like village. It looks like really, really tiny and like, you know, it looks like 800 plus years old. And they're like, wow, this looks like really cool. So they're walking around. They're like doing circles. They're going all around the premises. From the left, you just see a tiny monk walk out. And it turned out that they were in a Buddhist monastery and they just walked in. And all of these monks went fucking crazy to see these. Uh, and literally none of these monks have ever interacted with any Westerner. Holy ever. shit. And their and first they, and their first interaction was three GeoGuessr pro, pros <laughs> <laughs> was their first interaction and it's like super cool and they're, it's wild and they're literally and the monks know English because they know like a little bit from like the people in like Thailand and stuff who speak English and they're all just like do you have girlfriend <laughs> <laughs> and he's like he's like no we don't need we don't need that you know we don't need that he's like yeah we don't need either. either. <laughs> <laughs> they're, like, they're, they're literally bonding i'm like no no fucking way and then so they're like they're ask they're asking for like a specific guy they're like yo where's this guy where is he where and they're looking for him and this guy comes out and he speaks perfect fucking english never met a westerner in his life and Whoa. he's like he's like yes i watch youtube every day <laughs> i talk in the mirror i talk to people on messenger and I'm like, that's crazy. That's it's and he, such a contrast of yeah. someone that knows so much about the world and yeah. has traveled, and these people that are like, there. You have like, you have three guy. You have a guy who's living in a different country every month because he's viral on TikTok. Yeah. And then and they were like, how much subscribers do you have? One guy's like 50k, the other guy's like 150, and they're like, you're on TikTok, and he's like, yeah. And the, by the way, seeing fucking monks in the middle of like a thousand year old village. With the iPhone 11, <laughs> it's fucking hysterical, bro. <laughs> that they're just like, I will follow you on Facebook, and I'm like, the monks on Facebook. <laughs> they, they all like it comes like a row, like a wave. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's like that scene in fucking Doctor Strange. Oh, like, what is that? The Wi-Fi password. <laughs> <laughs> But it's just like one of the most humbling videos to see like this guy who's traveling for fun and this guy who's never left his home city. Yeah. And they're just talking and they're literally just like vibing. They set up a GoFundMe. My man's right now in a month long vacation in Thailand. Crazy. And he's traveling all around Southeast Asia. That's crazy. And like that that is one of the coolest things I've ever So like, subscribe to yeah. Team Joystick so, that so we can that we keep can the travel, lights on. So we can travel. And I'm like, damn, and I just meet kinda, monks. And they were bugging out because he has two point five million followers on TikTok. So they were so, bugging so out. So they were like, Yo, you're famous. <laughs> yeah. like, he's like, I'm not, but thank you. <laughs> Yo, no, Rainbow's I, famous. I want to segue to this since you're talking about cities and stuff. I just want to be <laughs> super glad that we live in New York City and have so much culture around because I was taking one of my classes yes, yesterday. And uh, <laughs> no, I'll get to it. Listen, because it's. No, not you, Dylan. Just face, I, I fucked moved, his I face on the micro. I went like that and I hit my face. Anyway, go nice. <laughs> no, um, one of my classes was, um, you know, how to have parental interviews to see if the child needs any like special instruction or any has any disabilities and the woman it's a video that 11 years ago and the woman you is good? the woman is talking <laughs> and says uh like she tells the boys worse that's that's one dollar or that's like it's like kind of broken and i was like all right so the child's young and she says notice how i the, the way i spoke what i wrote down was exactly what the child said that's because the child has two dialects and here I'm thinking, I'm like, all right, yeah, English and Spanish, they're teaching them both languages. And she was like, he, he, one dialect is standard American English. And AAV. And the other dialect is black English. AAV, And I yeah. was like, what? Like, she was like, or African American English. Vernacular. Or uh, Ebonics. Yeah. Ebonics. Ebonics. And I'm like, no. I'm like, what? <laughs> and I, I went to see, and it was 11 years ago, so I'm like, all right, this is old. All right, they didn't know back then. And when I look up ebonics, which is uh, apparently like ebony and phonics, someone told I learned, was um they're trying to make it more like as an academic dialect that shouldn't be corrected in schools. But what it, it already is, is what A A V E. That's what it's called. It's like taught. It's like taught. I never like, knew this. Yeah, I never knew this. That like you, you know, for those who don't know what I'm like, I'm talking about. So the, the examples they gave me were like. 
you know, in black English or Ebonics, the things are changed to be shortened. So <laughs> running, take away the G and it's running. And I'm like, brother, brother, brother. like, like, like <laughs> Like an actual course yeah, that yeah, I'm yeah, like, yeah. what the it's fuck is this? It's an actual class. It's fucking great. And yeah. I, uh, so this led me to find the funniest shit I've ever seen of this guy teaching two Polish students how to speak e- black like English. English. <laughs> and, and they're asking him questions. They're legit. They're like, so is this language you have to, to learn? To le-? And he was like, and it's, it's kind of like, we have to learn English first so you can know how to understand to break down the words. And uh, this guy's fucking with him he has to be fucking with him because he's laughing at the scenarios he's putting him he's like all right you're gonna go you're going to his house and you're gonna go watch a movie i want you to talk like you know like if you're taking a spanish class and he goes i want you guys to talk in ebonics well, go gotta- and these two polish guys what's up bro? <laughs> what's up brother? Yeah, brother how's it going man you trying to disrespect me man and i'm like yeah, yeah, oh that's my great. god! This, oh this is Lord. this is really this is hysterical because I had a very similar moment of like a couple of years ago where I was on YouTube and the guy I follow he like teaches languages like that's his like YouTube channel and he has a he has like a thirty minute he has a video on Jamaican patois. By the way, he's like a Nord, oh, yeah. he's a Nordic guy. He has a patois video and he has an AAVE video and it's a very similar thing where I have to hear this Nordic guy be like, "Yo, sup, brother?" and it's like yeah. it's it's the most like. Bizarre. Yeah, it's I, so I showed bizarre. Uh, I showed it to my parents too because I was like, I can't believe what I'm watching. Yeah. And uh, even that he said, you know, we shorten words. So like, instead of saying everything is all right, and both my mother and father were like, I, <laughs> like, 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 and I'm like, so like, and what I'm trying to say is that we, I, since we live in New York and we had this whole discussion, we're surrounded by so many dialects and so much like different cultures that, I mean, obviously, like we know how to speak that. No, I'm like, that's crazy. That's, that's crazy to me. That's a good observation. It's like we, it's just people in New York speak AAVE to a certain extent. So it's almost like it's built into the culture. So it's like in our head, it's kind of weird that that's like a study. I was about to say, you could probably do a fucking college class on just New York terminology yeah. these days. Oh, oh, br- it's brick. It's br- yeah. No one else says brick. I feel like only no like one else. Brolic brick. isn't a word. Brolic. <laughs> yeah. I, f- I found that, I found that out like three week months ago. Yeah, it blew bro- my mind. Fucking brolic AF, bro. Come on. What do you mean? That's say that word, word like once a week. Holy shit. I say it all the time. Yeah, yeah word. word. Like it, word. That's another dead one. Ass. We just literally, we just confirmed. What is a dead ass? It doesn't make any fucking sense. Facts. Yeah. It's in the live. <laughs> My guy. Yeah. Shout out. Shout out. Speaking of AAVE, fucking March Madness. <laughs> Hold on. Before you get into that, before before you segue into uh, horrible amazing segue, segue yeah, by the way, that, really that, speaks miles it. about Dylan. He, he literally said, speaking of cities, <laughs> like that was his segue. <laughs> Come on. No, I was just gonna fucking say that I saw a video where like this uh, white guy he speaks in, in patois to yeah. uh, to another like Jamaican guy, I and it's he's like he's that. like in a suit and sunglasses. But usually when they do it, the whole thing is like the guy who gets spoken to is like get the fuck out of here, and they talk. But the guy doesn't like even acknowledge the fact that he's just like a regular American white kid and just like has a normal ass conversation with him, and it's so dope. I he's love like that. talking to these girl big time man, and you go, and then the guy's like for real, go, for real, for real. Yeah, and I was like, running? I was like, yo, like, that's oh, so God, fire, it's, it's so fire. cool. That's why it's actually not hard to speak. It's actually very easy to speak. Yeah. Oh, so you should speak it right now. Yeah, right, it's no. <laughs> you should do I it. I will not. I will not do but your Sean Paul impression. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Cool. Like when you say it, like when you want to like enunciate something, you just say the word twice. Like if someone was running really fast, you go she go runny runny. Yeah, <laughs> oh, I'm learning. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you should teach it. Yeah, I teach patois and Joey teaches AAV. Yeah, yeah. what do I teach? Uh, <laughs> accents. <laughs> Sick. Yeah, Christopher walking accent impressions. Low. <laughs> When you talk, people are taking notes. Make sure you add a syllable to yeah. every word. In the that video, the white one was like, and it's a dialect that I am unfamiliar with. And I was like, oh god, look. Oh. It's like so you, you you should have taught the class at that point. Do you actually want to talk about the madness that's happening in March? Oh right yeah, now? so like, um, because it is to be fair, it it's actually madness. So uh, oh shit, yeah. So for the first time ever in the tournament, there were no one seeds currently left. In fact, this is the first time where there's not even seeds one through three. Yeah, seven, of, seven of the eight people have never won a, a, a championship yes. left. So it's, Only one team has won a title before, which is kind of crazy. Yeah. And uh, I just want to say that it's like, it, it is like, I used to not get the hype. 
Because it's like you guys definitely don't get the hype to a certain extent. I didn't like, get it until this season. Yeah, I'll tell you that. Because it's like it's it's not only like not a professional sport. It's like amateur. It's professional, but it's like college. Yeah. Um, but it's also just like really hard to get behind. Like, why is this exciting? And then you watch it, and then you're like, oh, okay. Because it's honestly where two people go to thrive, and that is white people and mid tall dudes. Yep. Go the fucking kill. And that's it, like nowhere else can you pop off that hard. Like as a white person, it's like that's it. Mm-hmm. Playing basketball, there's no other unless like you're in like a viral video or something like that. It's like March Madness or the Union. It's like the, 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 yes, Bobby. Yeah, yeah, yeah yes. Uh, the police force. You yeah, know? yeah. <laughs> like, where, like a city job. Yeah, you, you, you know, like these people are litter or something weird where it's like you know I used to ball and then you know HR really spoke to me. <laughs> then I started doing people's taxes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's just weird that it's like all of these people are like most of them will not do this like they'll coach maybe but you know most of them are not going to be here so it's like they are really playing their heart out because this is like this is what they're doing yeah and uh now there is the final four left so i very much recommend everyone to watch that next week because will you be doing betting or yeah probably i've Mm -hmm. i've i've been successful with betting my uh my bracket uh obviously everyone's brackets got fucked up but i picked creighton to win creighton did not win uh, it's very sad. I didn't even know that was a school. Yeah. There's a lot. What the fuck is going on? There's a lot. Joe, <laughs> college basketball. Joe, Joey's like, I thought we were talking about soccer. <laughs> but uh, no, it's Final like four. It's like the Fantastic Four, right? <laughs> yeah. That's who they meet at the Doctor end. Doom comes yeah. and slam dunks. Only, only one. Only they one alley-ooped live. it to the Silver Surfer. <laughs> He's really good. <laughs> but um, no, like it's just super cool to see, and uh, I really hope. Uh, I don't know. I hope it's good. Fire. I love that shit. Fucking people really do hoop, and now we need the hoop. Fucking, I want to play basketball. Oh, yeah, I, I want to do that. Don't you have a court now? You're fucking building? I'm going. That's it. You have a court? Yeah, his building yeah, has a court. My building has like a, a shitty basketball court now. Yo, fucking, what was I going to say? Uh, I really, <laughs> I wish I had, it's just you talking about, hold on. I'm going to do like a Google search here. Um, doopy boop. Baseball, Basbeel, Globe Trotters. What comes up here? Not the Savannah Bananas. I see this guy that like slams the bat on the floor and uh-huh. it spins and he grabs. So my it. dad was telling me that like he was like, "Yo, Bob, look up this fucking this team," and I don't remember what it's, they but were. But it's not the Savannah. It's Banana. not the Savannah Bananas. They were called like the American something. The American, American Dream Team. It was it that. It Dream might have been the American Dream Team. Am I just saying? Uh, or are you lying to me? No, you lying to me. You're a liar. Dude. All right, point is, is I, my, just, I, I just took a guess. I wasn't. My lying. dad told me the other Mario. day. He was like, "I want you to look this up for me." So we look it up, and it's like these this like baseball exhibition that's happening in like a private field, and people are watching, and there's like a whole team on the field, and they're playing against like these three guys in like colorful outfits. My dad basically explained to me that they were like the Harlem Globetrotters of baseball. That they would travel around and they would play teams like four on nine and they would do all these fancy tricks and shit like that and they would hype up the crowd and do jokes and shit right but all the footage that my dad was showing me was from like the fucking 70s which would make sense because that's when my dad was like you know 10 12 whatever when he went to go see it but then he's like see if you could find it see if you could find it i want to see if we could find like the actual people that were there like the team i saw because they were they were around for like decades yeah yeah, so i'm looking i'm looking i'm looking and my dad is like that's them that's them i remember oh shit that's the guy and i look and i I look in the corner of the picture and it says 1924 and i'm like dad this is from the fucking 20s dude and he's like Oh no, that's not them. Then. <laughs> I was about to say your your dad is 140. Your dad's, dad's a, time a vampire. He's a the time fuck? traveler. He's just old, man. He oh, looks good for his age. So shout out to the uh, the those guys. What were they called? I don't fucking know. That yeah. reminds me that like uh, what were you gonna say? You, you said he looked good for his age, and there's a like they always say there's this um, I don't want to call it stereotype, but they say Puerto Ricans don't age, which leads me to believe that we're all vampires. Yeah. So. Puerto Ricans age. Oh, they do. I'll tell you that much. I don't have any of them that age. Black don't crack. I'll tell you that much. I'm not even trying to be that stereotypical guy, but you look at Jerry's dad, and and case. That's literally all I need. Exhibit A. <laughs> I don't remember how old Jerry's dad is, but he's up there, and he looks younger than my dad. It's mm-hmm. insane. That's true. Yeah, actually, that's true. Jerry's dad. Jerry's, Jerry's dad looks, dad looks pretty young. So there you go. Yeah. 
Expect Jer- even Jerry. Jerry looks the exact same as he did when he was like Jer- five years Jerry old. Jerry looks exactly the same at all times. Here is a like here's a picture of Jerry with a guitar when he's like five years old, maybe four, and he looks exactly like he does right now. He just you has sh- muscles. You should literally show him at five, him at like fifteen, and him now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. literally the same. No, person. you should literally show the picture and just add muscles. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry, Look baby Jerry, it, it don't baby crack, bear. man. I don't get it, bro. Add muscles on baby Jerry. Fucking uh, last thing I wanted to mention was uh, something I'm kind of hype about. I platinum Death Loop. Just as a quick thing, if you uh, if you're looking for a fun game to play, play Death Loop. But it was actually a pretty fun experience. I had a good time. But less on the topic of Death Loop and more on why I played it. Obviously, it was to platinum it. Death Loop was platinum ninety nine. Mm. <sighs> We're getting there, baby. One more, and I've got a hundred platinums under my belt. I've officially uh, picked Hogwarts Legacy to be my 100th Platinum. It's going to take me a good 50, 60 hours, I know. But, you should, you uh, it's, it's a while. And we'll be 23. Should have been it instead. Yeah, I know. But, I'm know. thinking about streaming the process. I felt like that might be a cool thing to do. Buy a little fucking wizard cape it's cool or something. To have a, it's cool to have like a little record of it as well. Like yeah. Definitely record when it's like about to pop, you know? Yeah. But uh, fucking, uh, you know, I'm excited. It, it really put it into perspective how much fucking time I've put into playing these video games to platinum them. But and a hundred, hundred percent them. And listen, you know, like it's funny because, like, I, it, I guess it took me 26 years to come to this, this part of my life yeah. where I like for a very long time I used to be really self conscious about my love for video games because I was like, you know. I love them. It's literally the yeah. one thing I've been doing since I was like three years old. Like I had a PS one and I was really You're good at games. It. Yeah, like, you know what thing. I mean? It was just, and it's always been like a constant thing in my life, but there's always that taboo with it too, that like they're nerdy or people who play video games. Oh, aren't like cool, damn, you know, oh, like, you're right? still playing those Or games. yeah, you're still playing games or you like them that much or whatever and all that shit. But then it was like, yeah, I do. And it, I'm not any different for it. It's just like, that's what I'm into. Like I like to play the fucking games. And when I thought about it, I was like, yeah, platinuming games is like literally one of my fucking favorite things to do. So I'm looking at this whole situation as kind of like an achievement for me. Like, I'm like, holy fuck, I actually did it. Yeah, because, I mean, that, that's not easy. And I explained it to my mom, too, because we were talking about it. And she was like, because you like, she's basically, she was like, because you fiend over it, right? I was like, yeah, because she's like, there's some days where I'll come up and you're like there like two hours, three hours later, and you're still like on the same thing trying to finish it. And I'm like, because for me, it's like, it's the... It's like the, 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 what's the fucking word? The serotonin boost of just like completing that next task. It's like, mm. oh, I fucking did it. What's next? Like, and then it's like, even when I read the description and it's like, it's the hardest thing in the game, I'm like, let's fucking go. Like, I'm, I'm going to be at this for five hours or something. Mm. But I don't know why. I'm just low key. I don't know whether to thank or like be mad at you, but you got me into platinum in games. I remember like you were talking about like, oh, I'm going to platinum this thing. And I was like, what does that mean? And he goes, it's when you get all the trophies. And I was like, Oh, those little things that pop up occasionally that I don't give a shit about. And yeah. they're like, yeah, no, you, you collect all sorry, of them, sorry you about get a that. platinum. And I was like, that's it. Yeah, That's I, it. And I just yeah. checked. I have 45 platinums. And to be fair, it didn't start like that. It started with me just my whole outlook on platinum in games was if I'm going to play a game, I want to get the most out of it. So I want to do everything oh. there is to do. But then that very quickly turned into like a little obsession of like, oh, I fucking like completing games. And for what it's worth, not to because it's not really a brag because the majority of the games that I platinum and that you platinum in general are like single player experiences. But in doing so, you learn a lot about the games and end up being like really good at them to the point where like I can pick up games that I've platinum and show people like stupid tricks in them. And they're like, how did you fucking know that? And I'm like, I I don't know. That's very true. I just decided to put two weeks of my life into this one time. Like. I agree with that. Honestly, like, and you didn't cheap your way out of it either. I have, like, 65 Platinums. About 20 of those are the random fucking just, like, an hour game, an hour and a half, <laughs> I'll only five platinum. minutes. Yeah, you found the easy Platinum. You know, I, I, have, I, game. I have a good, like, 20 of the 25 that are actually difficult, and the rest are just, like, I only find them games that, A, I genuinely want to play, and B, that I actually find somewhat challenging or satisfying to platinum. Like, if I read the description of, like, a trophy guide and it's, like, a 10 out of 10 difficulty, 200 hours, I'm like, I'm good. I'm not going to enjoy any part yeah. of that. But, you know. No, platinuming is platinum definitely fun. Have you get have you gotten a Hogwarts Legacy yet? I'm going to buy it tomorrow and get on it. I look, you want to watch you, like, the, immediately. I'm going to stream the <laughs> beginning of it. I'm going to stream the beginning of it for sure. I'm going to stream the end of it. All that middle shit, no promises, but I uh, I definitely want to at least bring people along for that part of the journey. Because, hey, it took fucking a very... What did, what did it take? When did PS3 come out? 
PS3 my, came out like 2008. 2006. Six. You know what? I could actually tell you when I got my first Platinum. First Platinum I got was uh, the Sly Cooper remaster. And hmm. I think that came out... Shit. I was in high school, I think. Is it called the Sly Collection? Yes. My first Platinum was fucking 13 years ago. So. Nice. I, I think I started pl- platinuming things once I got Infamous Second Son on the PlayStation 4. Because I, I can't recall platinuming or going hard on the PlayStation no. 3 era. You don't go hard in the motherfucking paint. So that's, uh, that's, that's my journey, guys. I'm ready for number 100. I'm going to go for 200. Hopefully it doesn't take another 13 I years. mean, I think, I think you're going to have to whip out some... Uh, my name is Mayo and some Freddy's. Oh, no, I actually have like my next six games planned, actually. So obviously we're not stopping at 100. After Hogwarts Legacy, we're going to jump into... I want to take a break from some of the more <laughs> heavy games. So we're going to jump into Untitled Goose Game. Oh, That's nice. That's going to be a fun one. Love, a fun one. It's a little five-hour uh, platinum. But then I want to do uh, Ghost of Tsushima. Never played it. I love Sushi. Ghostwire Tokyo. That game looks pretty cool. I like love, love China. I actually want to play... Uh, the two horizon games oh. i find that funny considering their playstation i, <laughs> I fucking hate you i fuck I, I find it funny considering that they're like playstation exclusives and i'm like the guy who plays all the playstation exclusives yet i haven't touched like the ones that are considered the big ps5 ones when are but we all gonna get a little big planet i have to get one. that one i have to get it i, I re- have it they said that the hardest trophy i looked it up the hardest trophy in the game is like a 10 minute long Level platforming like section no dying right? yeah and i looked at it and i'm not even trying to be that guy i was like i can do that in like an hour like i was like <laughs> i'm pretty i'm pretty well versed in the 3d platform right? that's part of it man that's i part platinum of the little big planet two and three with jerry i never really played those games yeah, those were I, fun. I don't create your own things like Fortnite. <laughs> <laughs> that shit is getting crazy that, that's for another episode though fucking uh i guess we could, knife? we could swing it into jam and yeah I got a jam. I found it in an interesting way. Did you now? Yeah. Can I start? No. Okay. No, you can't. <laughs> um, the song is from an Italian band, actually, or Italian singer. I'm just going on Google Translate to make sure I say it correctly. Uh, Strapati Longo i Body, which is translates to Torn Along the Edges. Uh, it's by Giancani. And I found the song because uh, this animated reviewer this reviewer that re- reviews animation he talked about this show on netflix by the same title torn torn along the edges and um the open it's the opening number and it was actually really cool it's a dope um reminiscent of like early pop punk maybe early blink but it's in italian and it was cool interesting definitely want to check out that show very too. very cool they're caught they're saying the show is like bojack horseman but like with real people and everything interesting very interesting. Hmm. Do you wanna? You wanna go? I'll go. I was just, I was gonna say real quick to preface. Shout out to Fallout Boy for dropping their uh, new album. It's pretty interesting because like half of it sounds like old school Fallout Boy, and I told Dylan before the podcast that the other half sounds like some new progressive rock Fallout Boy stuff. But either way, it's pretty cool. I'm into it. It's all better than that last bullshit album they dropped, Mania. Oh yeah. Ooh. But uh, to get off of them Ooh. and actually talk about the artist who does hold my. Uh, my jam of the yam spot. I said jam of the yam. Jam of the jam, jam, jam of the yam. Jam of the week spot. <laughs> that they didn't uh, do not ask me why at all. I have been watching Victorious. My mm-hmm. intentions were to watch the first season just for fun because I had nothing else to do. And then I just we all had to watch Victorious. Yeah, so I just, yeah. Started. It was just on. I'm sorry. I just left it running. It was just on. <laughs> it, it's not like I turned it, it on could, for it you to been watch. Just off, you know. <laughs> yeah. Look, the podcast has this very interesting thing where I leave all the work for the very last minute. So when you guys are like, oh, I'm outside, I literally roll out of bed from whatever it was that I was doing to open the door for you. Yeah. So when you come inside, whatever the fuck I was watching is what you're going to be watching. Gonna be watching. Dream, and you know that it's not a lie. Be- and you know that it's not a lie because you came into my room to start the podcast. Victorious was running. And when we went back upstairs, like Victorious seven episodes running. had passed and it was still running. It and was. you watched the seventh episode I willingly did. while I rolled the J. So jail. go fuck yourself. I they did. were in jail. They were in I Yerba. Yeah. Why am I going on this tangent? Regardless, I just want to shout out Leon Thomas, who plays Andre on the show, because every time he sings a song, I'm always like, that guy can fucking sing. So obviously, I, I went to look up some of his uh, more uh, current songs, and he has a new song came out a 
about a year ago called X Rated with Benny the Butcher. It's nice. fucking fire. Mm. So go check out X Rated by Leon Thomas the Third concert and Benny the Butcher. I would. I was even thinking. I was like, I wouldn't be mad if he collaborated with Ariana Grande. They have a very similar no, like R and B tone sound. I was too, about to say, well. like, it's kind of a shame he didn't cool. pop off too. No, yeah. Right I mean, he's fuck. He has Grammys. He's doing well. Like oh, he's, he's doing well. He's 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 really big in the songwriting producing aspect. He's, yeah, but he's not mainstream. Not he like writes for like, ah. he songwrites for Drake and shit like that. Look he's at just, that. Yeah, he's just not really like twenty one. Uh, but anyway. <laughs> Yeah, uh, my yam. Thank is. you for watching the Joystick Show. It's been a great time. Uh, <laughs> I've been sorry. Just wanted. To you, play. I mean, well, it's fine. Oh, you know, you know what, you're gonna play the sad boy card now. Yeah. I don't even want to. I'm gonna pick. I'm gonna pick a sadder song now. <laughs> <laughs> no, my uh, my yam is "My Dreams Are Trying to Kill Me" by Send Flowers. What a title! Yeah, very nice acoustic song. Uh, throughout the entire uh, album, he plays like a, a vocal sample from like a documentary or something, and it's like really out of place, but it works. It's fucking David Attenborough yeah. or something. It's like the world we see, yeah. the galaxies far away. And I'm like, what the fuck? But it that works. boy needs therapy. Very similar vibes. That boy ain't right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you for watching the Joystick Show. I'm really going to, real quickly, going to use this outro to also just joke about our boy, uh, Jose, because five minutes before Jose left my house last night, he uh, asked we started watching those like videos where they do 3d models of like how deep the ocean is and how big statues are and we started watching one about like how big planets and stars are and jose decided to explain everything he knows about space to me in like a six minute span by the end of it i was like whoa (laughs) (laughs) i was just like that's fucking crazy like half of me was literally like this is too much but half of me was like this is fucking sick at the same time because he knows what he's talking about me reading the fucking neil degrasse tyson book yeah word (laughs) but thanks for watching the joystick show episode 134 it'd mean a lot to us if you could subscribe if you could like this episode and support your boys going further we've got lots of cool stuff to show you going down the line and uh before we ski daddle anybody have anything to to say I might you you might have something to I say I might never mind you're I yeah oh that's the uh yeah the AARP language yes yeah, the yeah. double D down up down up we got language. it AV club AV AV YMCA MGMT bro <laughs> MGK <T-M-N-T. laughs> BNE dude uh, B-E-T R-E-S-P-E-C-T <laughs> 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 <laughs>